Hey guys, good afternoon. Sorry uh, for the interruption. I think there was some uh, issue with the microphone. But uh, I want to welcome you once more to XPHP Think Talks. And uh, we, like I said, that all we can do is to think amidst the uh, lockdown that the whole country is facing, the whole world is facing. And we really hope that we get rid of the coronavirus very soon so that as motorcyclists, we can actually go back to what we do naturally, riding. So we are here with a very special person, as you can probably read in the description. Uh, before actually getting in on the screen, I just want to tell you that a couple of weeks ago, we had another gentleman from halfway across the world. And he had, he was also a racer, but he was racing in a different kind of a, a race, which was Pikes Peak up the mountain. And that is also one of the toughest races in the world. And if you have ever been wanting to race, you definitely want, you definitely know about the Dakar Rally, which is perhaps the most difficult rally, a dangerous rally in the whole world. And we have here right now a guy, an Indian, who has been participating in the Dakar Rally for the last three years. So let me welcome Arvind. Hey. Hello. Hi. Hey. How are you? I'm good, man. How are you, Sunny? Great. Awesome. The smile on your face, that cute face, you know, it does not allow us to <laughs> think that you can take those flying jumps on those sand dunes and ride like that, you know, on, on, on the beach and stuff like that. You know, when I see you do stuff on your motorcycle in the mm -hmm. Dakar rally, I just can't mm -hmm. believe that, you know, that, you know, I mean, it's amazing. So welcome to the show. And, Thank you. Uh, Thank you. Most of the people already know that you are the, I think, the only second Indian to uh, participate yes. in Dakar and the only Indian to complete the Dakar rally, right? In 2019. And, uh, yes, yes, correct. So how do you feel about that? How do you feel about yourself oh. if you see yourself from outside? Would you idolize yourself? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I feel accomplished. You know, I've been, uh, I've been wanting to finish this from the past three years. So been been a bit of a uh, hard uh, way up there but uh, i feel good about it i mean that's a very you are being very humble right now i mean you know it's a nation of 1.3 billion people and there are only two of you yes two indians only who have gone into the dakar so i am sure yeah. that it must be something more than just little tough or just little hard way to the top you know, and, and, and yes. obviously you cannot say that uh, in, in, a, in a mere few words. People have to yes. walk the talk, right? So yes. let me ask you that, how did you start riding motorcycles? And when did this spark of racing, you know, and, and, and hence, you know, racing in Dakar came about? Ah, when I started riding bikes and scooters and I was maybe like 12 years old, I would steal my dad's scooter out uh, from my... Uh, from my house and uh, push it a little far away and then started and ride it around but uh, that's how i started riding uh, scooters and bikes and all of that right. but uh, i started racing when i uh, when i was in my second first year uh, degree that was in 2005 uh, i was inspired when i was in my 10th standard i was inspired by uh, c vijay kumar and santosh and all of them they had come to manipal and there was a supercross which happened in the uh, in a stadium here so that is when I got really inspired that, uh, you know, I wanted to do something like this. And that spark of motorsport actually came alive. But uh, right. it, it was not until 2005 that I did something about it because uh, 2004 is when I got my first bike. Uh, my parents uh, had uh, put me under the challenge that if I scored more than 80% in my PU, they would buy me a bike. So I scored about 84.7 and uh, that's when I got my first bike for my degree. And wow. uh, from 2000, yeah, <laughs> 2005 is when I started riding, uh, uh, racing actually. Uh, I started uh, with dirt track, that is uh, dirt track racing, and then slowly graduated my way up to supercross and rallies and, and all the way to the Dakar. Wow. So actually you started racing r relatively uh, older, like 22, if I'm not wrong. 21. 20, 21. All right. Yeah. So, yes. you know. A hard question here like you are in your middle 30s right now Correct. and there is a saying that you know it's there is a certain age still when you can you know reach your be at your a game like you you know Correct. you said once in one of your talks earlier yeah. so what do you think yeah. about that how how long can you fight age biological age that is 
and how difficult does it uh, keep getting it all depends on how badly you want to do something and how uh, how much are you willing to uh, you know uh, persist and continue doing it uh, depending on how disciplined you are in a life and uh, how how strong your belief in your goal is uh, to give you a live example my teammate mika mej is 40 years old and he won uh, stage in dakar last year so you know uh, age is just a number and it it, it all depends in uh, your belief and your thought process and your will to do something and your persistence in getting it done wow well, age is just a number and you know uh, funnily racing is also about numbers who came first <laughs> yeah. what time they have been close calls <laughs> and stuff like that so you know yeah. uh, before going ahead you know i would like people to know more about you so we have got yes. a collection of photos and and uh-huh. i'm going to show one photo by one by one and if you can just okay. very, very quickly elaborate about each photo that will be really nice okay. so here we go done. so first yes. one let's go is yes. this one Oh uh, yeah, this is in in the year 2006. This was my first national cha- uh, championship round ever in my life, which I uh, rode as a private year, and the only national race which I rode as a private year, because until 2005 I was riding uh, as a private year. But then I got the lead to uh, lead through someone that if I uh, do really good in uh, national championship, I would get a chance to ride for two years. And this is this is when it all changed. 2006 year March. first round happened in mangalore fortunately and i finished ahead of tvs motors uh, racing and that is when tvs spotted me and i've been with them ever since wow so perfect strategy for tvs the guy who beat us let's get him <laughs> <laughs> yeah you know, the, the the whole okay. the whole thing was if i was leading the championship i would get a run from tvs and that's why uh, that's why i made it sure that i got a good uh, i put myself in a good position in the beginning of the championship so i could represent them further wow so guys this is how you build your resume go out there show <laughs> what you can do and that's how you get into races right all right yes. so uh, this one yeah this was uh, 2010 i uh, that was the year when i started going to america and getting myself trained for supercross extensively and uh, this uh, this was a very good opportunity for me to meet uh, mrs stefan evert's uh, 10 time world champion uh, mxgp and uh, through our uh, very good friend mr selvaraj narayana who was uh, then the director for racing for ktm and uh, got a lot of inputs from uh, the world champion and it, it was really ecstatic for me to meet such a such a legend you know and uh, that is uh, that is one of the period in my life which uh, kind of changed uh, my approach towards sports and uh, uh, motor sports and how i approached it and how my uh, racing also improved because once i got back from america my uh, biggest uh, training period was about 6 months the first time i went so when i got back there was a big big difference and uh, you know people were like what uh, this is this is magic man and you know wow. that's that's when the whole level of racing changed for me amazing so you know it's very important to have mentors and meet the right people i think at the right time exactly. of your career so Correct. you know injuries let's talk about injuries so this one oh. is yes ah horrible. this one was yeah this is horrible you know this is this happened in the year 2012 2011 i won the championship in in india and in sri lanka 2012 uh, beginning of the year we had some races coming up in sri lanka and i was training for another race in sri lanka itself and this is this happened then in Ju- in the month of july i guess i broke my hip socket and uh, dislocated my hip and uh, dislocated my leg uh, from the hip below and uh, they put about uh, nine screws and a plate to put it back in place and uh, i had to go through extensive uh, physiotherapy for almost a year i was uh, i was told my career was going to be Uh, over and i won't be able to race but then i got back the following year that was 2013 and uh, won the championship uh, in supercross and rallies and uh, almost all forms of uh, racing that i took part in commendably and wow. that was that so was... guys you know the young guys who are watching right now <laughs> sorry the young guys who are watching right now you know when you when you say to your friend that you're screwed I mean, you've got to know the <laughs> definition of getting screwed. screwed. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So here yeah. we go. The next one is this one. Yeah. This was yeah. This was the year which I came back from uh, a massive injury that uh, that put me out for almost a year. 
because it took me almost 6 months to walk and then another 4 months of extensive uh, physiotherapy and all the possible things that i had to do for recovering and then some time on the bike and uh, this year is when i this is 2013 is when i won my supercross championship and uh, i think i won the rally championship also and uh, some of the uh, individual rally rallies also I, i really like the long hair i think you should get back to that you know i mean this was a good opportunity it's, for you in the lockdown <laughs> it's a pretty it's pretty hard to maintain in a racing you know because you're always in the dirt and there's a lot of sand going in so that's I why know. the long hair is missing here all right this so, is the content this one. by the way <laughs> sorry so this one yeah. <laughs> this was in the year 2015 when i won the uh, i think this is dakshin dare and uh, 2015 was really good for good for me i won the supercross championship i won the rally championship inrc i won dakshin dare i won red di himalaya i won uh, almost all all forms of off road racing that year and uh, you know that was that was like uh, a really good year for me uh, i had been dreaming of doing it for a longest of the time but then something or the other would go wrong uh, halfway through the season or just before the season but then that was really good for me and the whole season played out really well and uh, yeah. that also kind of paved uh, my way into national international rallying also you know it gave so the heavy go uh, that yes yes this was uh, 2016 my first uh, rally in spain this is the baja spain aragon aragon uh, the first year uh, you know it was all uh, it was all new for me and uh, the big bike was all uh, all to study for uh, because you know there is a lot of difference between my supercross and uh, rally riding uh, and it takes a little while for you to get used oh, to the yeah. bike but uh, but it was really nice it was uh, this. it was a uh, yeah this one this one was in morocco the following year 2000 i love this, this short man. 2017 oh yeah this was uh, climbing up the dune this is a hard pack dune uh, i think this uh, dune uh is like this because the previous day it had rained a little bit um uh, this this was when yep. this year uh, is when i kind of stepped up my game in world rally championship also this rally i finished uh, 13th overall worldwide so you know it was it was wow. really a good opening for me and uh, i had my fitness and i had my uh, rallies going on really great for me that that year yeah uh, i think you started to, to forget you know where you won what and you know it's yeah. actually a good thing <laughs> You know you're winning yeah. so much and touch wood. So this one, yeah, that's it. Here we go. Yes. Oh, this one was in 2018, Merzuga. Uh, mm. No, this is 2018 Merzuga, where I finished 13th overall. And uh, you know, Merzuga is one of the um, Dakar series races where it, uh, it kind of runs through the same format as the Dakar. and which is a very yep. good stepping stone where you can understand how where you stand uh, regarding the uh, regarding your training your riding your navigation and to understand the whole format of how dakar works this is like right. uh, a quarter you know it is like dakar split in maybe one fourth so you have a brief idea about how it is going to be for the rest of the dakar wow this is like the pre boards all right yes, so exactly uh... <laughs> <laughs> or right, let's let's uh, talk about this yeah this is a wonderful team that you see uh, which has been uh, the backbone of me and the uh, and the team which has been doing internationally and uh, the dakar uh, you see my uh, racing manager mr uh, uh, selvaraj on the on the second from the left the extreme right is my uh, mechanic without whom i would be uh, i would not be in the place where i am his name is uh, prakasham and uh, he he puts in a lot of work you know you, you know it, people don't really understand uh, what it takes to be uh, what it takes to have a bike which has no problems and the bike to be in immaculate conditions every day you go out and race and put yourself in dangers so that guy takes a lot of credit you know which has not been uh, highlighted much uh, so that's prakasham for everybody right uh, so i think it's very important for you uh, for any racer to have a very good team and yes. uh, that goes without saying and people usually think that if i'm very good at riding you know probably yes. i can win but they don't understand yep. that it's also your team the people who motivate yes. you you know so correct it it's it's great. not just you it's 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 a lot of other elements and efforts of the whole other uh, you know whole lot of people around you who who also share the same goal for you you know yeah absolutely yeah. so this one is one of my favorite pictures that i saw yeah 
What is this? <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. This was 2019 when I finished the Dakar, uh, you know, uh, this, this, this moment, man, uh, I, 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 I wouldn't trade this for anything else ever in my life because I had been dreaming uh, to get to this finish line and hold this flag up high for almost three years. And I was, I was failing at it. Uh, the first year I failed miserably. The second year I did really great until I broke my leg. But, uh, you know, I think uh, third time was uh, Chama and this, uh, this was the third outing uh, for me in Dakar and Peru. And uh, this was right after I finished the last stage and we got to the uh, group. Can you if, you, if you see at the back, you can see a yep. big bunch of riders already who finished there. So it's like a regroup where you come, stop, celebrate and then right. you go back to the bivouac. You, you get a convoy uh, ride for uh, the finish. Wow. Well, it must be yeah. a tremendous feeling to hold a flag which represents 1.3 billion people. I mean, I cannot even imagine. So I, I, I oh. can only say that I'm having goosebumps right now. And uh, thank you for making India I proud. feel fortunate, man. I feel fortunate. Yeah. You know, I feel so lucky to be doing what I'm doing and uh, representing the one country and representing my team because, uh, you know, uh, I know a lot of people even want to do this, but, uh, you know, it, it's a lot harder than just said uh, and done. So yeah. I, I feel really fortunate. Absolutely. You're fortunate and very hardworking. You know, let me, I should yeah. put it out to the young people out there that uh, you, you need a lot you. more than luck. Uh, so this yes, one. That, oh, this here, uh, bo the, the guys right uh, next to me are uh, Mikhail Medj in the middle and the uh, extreme is Adrian Medj. They both are brothers and they ride for uh, Sherco uh, PBS Factory Rally team. Uh, they both are my mentors. I stay with them. Uh, you know, uh, Adrian was the, uh, the guy who trained me initially for the first year, and uh, I stay with Mika Medj. And uh, you know, I can't, I can't uh, thank these souls enough, man. I, I feel so really fortunate uh, to have and right. have them in in my life because uh, it's rallying in uh, international and uh, Dakar is a complete uh, different animal altogether. So, you know, I got a lot of in insights and uh, uh, um, my life was made a lot easier because I had them in my life because, right. you know, it was, it was shown to me in an easier way and it was given to me a lot easier than, uh, than the harder way, you know, everything was so organized. Yeah. Even if I yep. even if I took a wrong step, you know, I had already I always had these guys to correct me and put me back in the right uh, direction, and uh, they really made my life a lot easier than it could have been for me. Yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. You know, if there are politics within a team and you know within your teammates, it can really you know bring you down. You know, and and, and correct. You're fortunate in that regard. Absolutely. Yeah. So I, I you yeah. know I want to show you one picture which uh, is one of my favorites. And okay. here I take the chance. And this is me with you oh. in 2015. <laughs> yeah, this is yeah, this is back at the factory. Just yeah. one of one of your yeah. fans. You know? yeah. <laughs> All right. So let I me get this photo out it, of the way. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. All right. Now let's get to uh, some other questions. Now yes. um, you know you, you can there is no possible answer to it, but what does it feel to be competing in the Dakar? Mm -hmm. And how actually hard it is. To compete, uh, prepare for the Dakar. It uh, it feels ecstatic to be competing in the Dakar. It's a, it's a, it's one of the biggest dreams of uh, mine coming true. So it really feels ecstatic, and it's uh, it's really uh, um, you know it's uh, how can I say it? It feels really great to be there and doing it. Uh, it's it's a tough job. It's a mammoth of a race, and uh, you know it it really uh, looks nice and. Uh, uh, the the videos that you all see is only the good parts of the racing. Uh, the, the, <laughs> rally, sure. the rally grows. Yeah, the rally grows to very treacherous terrains, and uh, it's it's the length and uh, the consecutiveness of the uh, difficulties that kind of puts the you know puts the rally in such a peak uh, for everyone. You know, uh, because it's yeah. uh, it's a mammoth. It's a mammoth of a race, and you got to do maybe 400 to 500 kilometers on an average, 600 kilometers on an average for 14 days without, uh, with maybe maybe hardly six or seven hours of sleep. So you know, it's it's uh, it's not easy at all. It's very physically taxing, and it's uh, more so mentally taxing also because you're constantly fighting with your own self, and uh, you're uh, you're almost. Uh, uh, by yourself for almost four or five hours in a day, uh, struggling through deserts, wow. horizon to horizon, nothing, not not even not even a single soul to talk or uh, to 
to converse with. So it's it's really uh, a really hard game to uh, be a part of. You know, be very truthful. Do you actually feel like a superhero when you're flying through the desert and stuff, or you don't? Uh, I would. No, not. <laughs> <laughs> no, I've been racing for. I've been flying and jumping and uh, racing for almost 14 years. You know, it doesn't really feel different. Uh, it's just that uh, you know you got to you got to make the right choices. You know, sometimes uh, the the feeling of making you fly might you know even catch you in a wrong uh, wrong spot. So you got to be really careful and you got to be really attentive all the time. And the minute you kind of take your focus off, it it is going to bite you. So you can't really take it for granted. Uh, but of course, like you said, flying really gives you a good feeling. So every time I go up the sky. it uh, makes me feel alive and uh, want wow. to do it more yeah. oh, i'm again getting goosebumps now all right so i have one question <laughs> for the lesser mortals like me all right so yes. i i've seen that the I, we just spoke about how beautiful the dakar rally landscapes can be you know the mm-hmm. sands the setting sun the rising sun and you know riding beside the sea and stuff like that so is it possible yes. for a regular motorcyclist with a decent mm-hmm. amount of experience to do the same route on his or her motorcycle like normal ah, not really some of the routes i don't think uh, a normal guy could uh, normal person could do it because you know it really takes some professional skills you know because uh, in peru there were dunes which are more than 3 kilometers uh, on on a inclination of 80 degrees so even oh. if you yeah you you got to carry a certain amount of speed even to climb up and yeah. uh, forget going across uh, the dune so you know it, it <laughs> maybe yeah. maybe maybe 30% of the of the of the race there uh, it's only uh, routes that you got to uh, deal with you can probably do it but uh, some places where the dunes and some places where the trial sections are is really hard you know even even the most like professional this, guys maybe yeah 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 so even the most professional guys find it hard so you know for for a normal guy to be doing that will he can do it but not uh, without having prior training for uh, for uh, for a longer period of time and uh, before putting himself in maybe the same kind of situations but not in that magnitude right so uh, you know coming to one more hard question perhaps the hardest of all a second okay. hardest maybe the 2000 edition <laughs> uh, 2020 edition saw yes. two fatalities mm-hmm. right unfortunately yes. uh yes. so when you're riding out there you know that with every twist of throttle like going across the sand dune over the sand dune whatever there is a certain chance that yes you might get hurt really bad you know god forbid yes. for a bit of fatality does Correct. that slow you down or is that always there like a guarding angel so that you don't do something foolish see like i said that only makes you work more harder and uh, keep your focus more uh, straight on point because you know you're always always on the lookout for any any uh, stone or any dip or anything that can catch you off guard uh, it only motivates you to be more uh, focused at uh, what you want and uh, you know not uh, let your mind wander off uh, and like you said it is it is in a way uh, a guardian angel for you not to do, be doing something stupid but even then you know there is there is a chance chance that uh, something might catch you off guard but uh, the way to deal it is uh, to look as uh, forward as you can and uh, read your road book properly because in the road books uh, most of the most of it uh, most of the dangers are written so if you can read your road books you can already be prepared for what what you're going to deal with ahead so you know you can you can avoid uh, these kind of circumstances and uh, injuries and fatalities also right okay uh, so arvind uh, sorry um so which is the most important part of technology or tech in a motorcycle mm-hmm. that you think mm-hmm. helps a rider get through the dakar ah mm-hmm. uh, uh, technical part i think uh, on the whole if i should say uh, the whole bike should run without any technical problems you know <laughs> the most so, important part like let let's say traction most, control i don't know whatever yeah ah uh, uh, the most important part i think uh, for me power and suspension Yeah. Right. Yeah, if you okay. if you have good suspension you can really do what you want to do. Uh otherwise you're always on the compromising end that uh, okay your uh, suspension or a bad tire or uh, lack of power or something like that. Yeah. So on the whole the whole bike has to be really good but uh, I think yeah. suspension plays a very major role. 
right? So I just mistakenly say traction control. Obviously, you don't use traction control, right? Yes. Right? Yeah, no, 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 no. And is ABS control, also yeah. no electric aid. No, no ABS, no traction, no electronics at right. all in the bike. Yes. So this is something else. You know, have you ever raced on the road, like road racing? I mean, not on the road, like track racing, tarmac racing. Have you ever done that? Ah, uh, I have actually. You know, uh, I used to do uh, um, do commercials for RTR uh, brand, and uh, I've done few of them in uh, MM, MMSC, MMRT now, and uh, even in uh, even in Bud International Circuit. Right. So I okay. have tried my hands in uh, on road road uh, circuit racing also, but then you know right. what happens with me is I think I am uh, on slightly on the heavier side for road racing because all all my counterparts on uh, road racing teammates they are all maybe 45 mm. 50 mm. kilos and I am maybe mm. close to 70 kilos. So oh, even if I okay. uh, even if I push my limits and uh, catch them in the corners. When they come to the home stretch, they just look at me and say, wave goodbye and, you know, <laughs> the, the, you know go yeah. off. So, yeah. So, so that's probably more true in, uh, in like uh, lower capacity motorcycles. Yes, so, yes. Um, yeah. All right. So, you know, um, tell me one thing. Which is your most memorable one single movement in Dakar? Perhaps like an, seeing an animal cross or something like that, you know, some something funny at the same, same time memorable. Besides finishing, uh, besides finishing. <laughs> <laughs> funny, I think. Uh, uh, memorable. Funny and uh, memorable. Memorable uh, was, uh, you know, uh, helping, uh, getting help from uh, a co-competitor. Uh, because I, on the ninth day or something, I was, uh, I was stuck in, right after the dunes, I was stuck there because of my uh, uh, regulator problem. So my battery wasn't charging and my FI wasn't uh, working. So the bike went off right. and then I, luckily I had a spare regulator in the bike. Uh, thanks to Prakasham, he always puts two regulators. So I unplugged the one which was bad and I put the new one on. And then I was, uh, it, this took me almost 40, 45 minutes for me to fix the bike already. So right. by by then uh, I had another competitor who I stopped him. Luckily he had jumper cables, so we stopped his bike and put the jumper cables to my batteries and started the started the bike. And uh, then I rushed uh, towards the finish. So that is one of the memorable moments where I literally thought my Dakar was over, and uh, I was I was literally in in tears, man. I was like, two years uh, yeah. you you know I I went down with injuries, and the third year I was doing great. I almost reached to to the end, but. Uh, uh, ninth stage, this happens, and I was, I was, I was, I was in a mixed uh, feeling place. But uh, I think uh, God heard my prayers, and I had this competitor who helped me out. That that uh, right. is one of the funniest and memorable moments, I should, I, I should say. Well, I mean, you're really a cool hat, you know, as I say, because you If this seems funny to you, I think you know, I can just imagine what you must be going through. Uh, just it's like over there, you know, and. Um, yeah, so you know, have you ever considered the Malay Moto class mm -hmm. in, in uh, the car? Right, which, which I would uh, want right to tell now, the people uh, because a lot of them don't know. So, if you can just yeah. tell about the Malay Moto class and then talk about it. Malay Moto class is, uh, is, a, is a class, is a competitive class where uh, a rider has to have, uh, have rider has no uh, team or uh, support from anybody else. He himself rides, he himself fixes the bikes and does all the mechanical stuff and uh, sleeps in the tent and has absolutely no team support uh, throughout the race from the start to the finish. So this is uh, this is the Malimoto class. Uh, there are a lot of guys who, who actually do it, but most of them who get to Malimoto classes have been professionally riding Dhaka for uh, a long, long period of time. Um, they've been a part of some or the other team and they've been, they know completely how Dakar works and they know uh, in and out of it. So they, they are the jack of the trade. So it makes, uh, makes it kind of easy for them to do it. But then it, it is really, really treacherous because, you know, on, um, on an average, you're doing 700 km, 600 kilometers a day, come back, fix your bike, do your road book, go eat, lunch, uh, shower, uh, fix your kit, put everything, uh, you know, organize everything, put it back in the truck. The truck also is from the organizers, you know, so there is absolutely no team support or whatever, whatever whatsoever. Uh, right. So it is one on one hell of a ride and uh, it's not easy. I am not considering it uh, yet, but uh, let's see if the opportunity presents itself uh, in the future. Uh, definitely, uh, I will. Well, so there's a question from Mr. Ravi Chandran, which we will pick up later on. Uh, but at the uh -huh. moment, can you uh, 
tell me that you know uh, what is your biggest source of strength and support and most importantly what role does has tvs racing played in uh, in your life and your career and how how they changing lives of other people uh, tvs racing yes uh, my biggest source of strength is uh, my parents and my family i should say uh, my mother was uh, an, an athlete uh, herself so they've been through hardship also and i've learned a lot of lot from them and i've learned how to endure uh, life and uh, how to endure uh, and uh, come out with flying colors so uh, the strength comes from there and uh, i do have a lot of uh, very good friends also who 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 have been athletes all their life and uh, who've been doing great for themselves so uh, it all depends on whom you put uh, yourself with and uh, whom you hang out also kind of reflects right. in who you are so you got to choose wisely in that and uh, fortunately i've been uh, i've been blessed with uh, good people in my life as well and uh, coming to tvs racing i think tvs racing has played a big big role in my uh, career because uh, if not for uh, tvs racing supporting me i wouldn't be able to uh, be climbing this ladder this uh, this soon and uh, uh, to this high uh, you know as a privateer uh, to be honest uh, it's it's a really expensive sport and uh, uh, you know it takes a lot of a uh, lot of practice lot of spares and lot of time lot of sweat lot of uh, teamwork lot of strategy uh, to to be accomplishing championships and uh, uh, to be doing races and all of that so tvs has played a major major role uh, and if not for tvs uh, dakar and uh, the world rally championship wouldn't have been uh, possible so you know uh, all the credit goes to them and uh, it's a give and take you know they they give us what uh, we ask them for us to perform and we perform for them so it's been it's been uh, a nice and long journey 14 years of uh, racing with them uh, on board uh, so right. other than that i think uh, you know tvs has a lot of programs like uh, young uh, young media program and uh, one make uh, championship in uh, circuit racing where uh, uh, they uh, talent hunt you know where, where they have talent hunt through, through through the country and they find uh, really good uh, uh, kids who are capable of uh, riding motorcycles really good uh, and they train them and they offer them with uh, riding gears and train uh, their bikes and uh, logistics and all of that so um you know which actually contributes a lot in a bigger picture if you think uh, you know the racing culture is improved uh, with this way so if not for uh, somebody like tvs doing uh, things like that there is no word uh, right. of any racing or any any championship happening otherwise you know so i think they are helping uh, the motorsport fraternity and the culture to be growing in india and uh, they are doing great at it right so one more question from someone uh, he's asking that how do you train where do you train and how important mm-hmm. is physical and mental fitness uh, in this oh it plays hand in hand uh, physical fitness and mental fitness also but uh, it it comes uh, comes across as uh, you know if you if you really have eight packs and if you have big lats and if you have big muscles you can do it but uh, that doesn't work that way the the mental uh, strength also has to be at par because uh, you know after a level it becomes uh, 80% mental so even if you have the strongest body and if your mental um, uh, capacity is not good enough and it's not matching your, what your body can do you you won't be able to succeed in uh, uh, in doing what you want and achieving what you want so it's it's a good combination of uh, both physical and mental i should say right um what do you think was the most difficult phase of your life ah uh, most difficult phase of my life uh, i think uh, coming back from an injury you know i've i've been hurt quite uh, quite a bit uh, i've had bad injuries for uh, quite some time now so it's always hard to uh, you know uh, initially when you get hurt bad you don't really want to get back to racing and uh, don't want to do anything of that sort you just want to keep away from uh, hurting yourself but then after a while after you start getting a little better and moving around uh, is when you right. start uh, missing what you really want to do uh that is when you miss that uh, the excitement that you get uh, and the the feeling that you get when you ride uh, the motorcycle because it's only when you when i ride the motorcycle is when i forget everything else otherwise there is something or the other bothering me or you know there is something yeah. or the other which i am after or i am chasing or i am not satisfied with i want more of it i i am not having enough or something or the other which is going on in my head 
it is only when i'm on the bike when i'm completely only with the bike and the feeling of uh, riding and you know it's it's like music you know it just plays and i'm 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 in a total different uh, trance altogether so i i start missing that i want and i want more of that and that is when uh, uh, you know the, you start working towards getting back but the hard part is getting uh, getting hurt and uh, being idle for uh, a long period of time uh, where you can't do what you want to do Oh, that is very, very well described. I think you should start writing a book. It's about time. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So uh, this wasn't a joke, but anyway. So maybe you already are. Thank you. Don't tell me, right? Thank you. <laughs> but uh, so you know, uh, tell me that I started my first question. One point three billion people, and only two of them have been in Dhaka. Mm -hmm. So what is mm -hmm. the problem? What is the roadblock, pun intended, in Indian motorsports? And why are not people aren't getting into this? primary problem is uh, lack of racing culture in india uh, you know not not many people understand what racing is because you know even my neighbors in bangalore wouldn't uh, really understand even my relatives for for that matter would ask me when are you going to race rossi so you know i oh. i raise a complete <laughs> okay. different form of racing right. you know how how would i even go uh, so oh, that, that would be interesting maybe what... you can go to his ranch <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can I can race him on on the flat tracks and uh, dirt tracks, but not the circuit, you know. So I was yeah. I was just trying to make you understand that uh, this is what the kind of ideology that they have when they say racing, it's yeah. just going taking a bike and going fast. That's about it. They don't really understand the formats of it. There is there is yeah. different formats and it's done differently. Uh, so which 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 shows the lack of culture, racing culture in India. and uh, i think uh, the lack of uh, manufacturers also it's only tvs which has been uh, tvs motor company which has been consistently uh, having a racing team professional racing team right. and been really doing it professionally and in style for almost 37 years now so you know uh, we need more corporate teams and we need more manufacturers uh, getting more uh, involved in this and trying to help the motor sports and bring it up uh, for younger generations because if there are facilities and if there is a chance given to younger talents i'm sure we can have all all of them representing us in world stage and we can have our mark in world stage also it's not uh, right. by chance that other other countries are uh, just be dominating uh, in, you know in the world stage it's it's because they are made uh, made available with the facilities and the teams and and the manufacturers are actively you know taking part in creating this uh culture and uh, creating this habit for the younger kids so when they when they turn uh, maybe 15 16 they are world champions you know so right. i think that is what that is that is what uh, has kept us from away from racing and uh, like i said uh, only two because i think uh, only few of them uh, you know get the right uh, are in the right place in the right time and get to race uh, uh, professionally and that is when the idea of what next comes in and then you start uh, you know exploring into what next can be done what is the next uh, closest thing that you want to do or what have you achieved or what what more do you want to achieve and what are the what are the forms that are uh, available to perform well uh, so there are questions which are coming up right now but i have my own questions but i think i would uh, take uh, one of the uh, megna megna she so so why i'm saying because you know girls they are not into uh -huh. rallying so much and she is uh -huh. asking that uh, what are the tips that you can give to a lady mm -hmm. to get into rally uh -huh. uh, uh i think uh, uh, you know you got to there are uh, there is uh, uh, there is a professional facility where you can go and train yourself in bangalore uh, you know uh, you got to you got to get uh, professional supervision which will make uh, a lot of things easier for you because uh, you if you are doing you doing things for yourself you would be doing certain things which endlessly which is uh, not giving you any results so you you it is better for you to get some professional help and professional supervision in how you have to uh, you know train yourself uh, skill wise or you know how how important it is to have the right kind of bike which uh, which will suit you to do the rallies or uh, how how you can understand the format of it you know everything has to be uh, pertained professionally so the 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 window of you learning and performing kind of uh, kind of comes uh, comes really short uh, if you do it on yourself just uh, the just the trial and error method will take you a longer period of time where you would be on uh, a big loss of time so uh, professional right. help and uh, professional help and uh, getting yourself in a good facility right 
So I think uh, these tips apply not only to women, to anyone. But uh, yes. now you've already given the advice to budding rallies. Now, the hard question, the hardest is that when it comes the time to hang up your suit, mm -hmm. what would you want to do after that? Ah, uh, I literally haven't uh, thought about it on a serious note, but then uh, when it's time, I think I would want to be an aggregator and uh, curate more events in India and, uh, you know, uh, curate more, uh, more events in India for initially and then have more active participation, spread the word and, uh, you know, bring the, bring the popularity to the sport, you know, the glamour which is missing into the sport and, uh, you know, the other idea is to uh, help the sport grow and uh, uh, have our own world champions from India, you know, uh, so yeah. that's the idea. Absolutely. Let's, uh, yeah. All right. So uh, the last question, how do you want the world to remember you? Oh, uh, as a good human being, man. as a good human being, as okay. uh, you know, anything, anything I do, I want to do it uh, uh, for the good of it. And I want to be the best of it. I, I work hard. I am persistent. I do, uh, you know, I think I, uh, I uh, try and do good uh, to my uh, fellow riders and my fellow people also. Uh, I, I literally want to be uh, known, known as a good man. That's about it. There is nothing more that I would want from anyone. What? That's so sweet. I mean, <laughs> that is a perfect answer. Sweet and simple. So, guys, there you go. Uh, Arvind, do you want to say anything else before we end this? Uh, uh, anybody who are aspiring to getting get, uh, get into rallying or uh, uh, off-road or any kind of motorsports, you know, uh, read through uh, articles and read through stuff that uh, XBHT has and you have a site called FMSCI where you can have all the knowledge that you want and uh, do not race on the streets and uh, hurt yourself or hurt somebody else. Uh, be responsible, uh, you know, because today if you do something wrong on the streets, the whole racing fraternity gets the blame uh, of it, that, uh, right. which, is, which is not really good for uh, the growth of it. Uh, thinking at where we are right now, we don't want that kind right. of impression at all. So you know, be responsible, get uh, get professional supervision, and uh, all the best with uh, with all that you have. Uh, since we are all going through this hardship of COVID-19, uh, I would request everybody to uh, stay indoors and follow the protocol. Uh, keep yourself and your loved ones safe, and uh, don't do anything stupid. Uh, stay fit. All right. So, Arvind, thank you so much for giving your time and I really hope that you get more accolades for India and for yourself. And, thank you, man. Thank uh, take you, care, man, thank and you so much. keep riding safe. And thank so, you. guys, thank you. Uh, we'll see you in uh, another talk, XBHP Talks, maybe later this week. Till then, keep riding safe. Thank you. Peace. Peace out, everybody.